Good morning. Today we continue the same nano materials and devices. Previously I told you the examples of polymers which are normally used for making those devices, nano materials and uh, devices. Now probably you are in little confusion how these polymer molecules such a long chain macromolecules could be found in nano devices. Okay. Just you go back to uh, emulsion, polymer emulsion, how a polymer emulsion is formed. Now if a polymer is hydrophobic in nature, oily in nature that can be dispersed in a dispersion medium. Okay. So, such dispersion, the size of that dispersion is less than 10 to the power minus 4 nanometer your uh, centimeter and those emulsified particles droplets, fine emulsified droplets or particles whatever you can say, they may assume either spherical or rod shaped configuration which are which remain stabilized by emulsifier molecules. That means a micelle is formed from the shop molecules or emulsifier molecules and within the micelle there is a core. Okay. Now the core may be hydrophobic or hydrophilic depending on how those soap molecules are organized to form the micelle depending on the hydrophilicity or hydrophobicity of the dispersion medium. Okay. If it is water and if you take soap molecule which contains a hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. So, in that situation such micelles are formed by spherical or rod like aggregation of soap molecules. So, that the core becomes hydrophobic and cell becomes hydrophilic. Okay. Now, if within the core some organic materials say oils or something like that hydrophobic materials are dispersed. So, those hydrophobic molecules or materials will reside within the hydrophobic core stabilized by outside cell hydrophilic cell. All right. Now, since the dimension is very small, so we can consider such type of dimension as nano dimension, nano dispersion. Okay. Now, such device can be considered as nano device. <coughs> Now, within such emulsified droplets, fine droplets of nano dimension, some drug molecules or something like that can be housed. Then, if such thing is incorporated within the body, so that will uh, be that can be circulated through blood, provided that emulsion is not broken during such circulation only when it reaches the target site or affected site there it will be deposited. You understand very simple thing. So, you make a nano emulsion, nano dispersion containing the drug inject in the body that will flow through the blood circulated through the blood, blood will be the carrier there provided the emulsion is stable. That means, in the blood environment, in the blood plasma, their chemical nature, all these things, in presence of blood contains electrolytes, all those things. So, in that situation, the emulsion should not break and it will be circulated from the injected point to the affected side. During that movement, the emulsion should not break, otherwise, that if the emulsion breaks, so drug will be coming out and that will be deposited anywhere in the body. So, that is not what actually 
wanted. So, we have to see how uh, we will be preparing the emulsion with what material of what uh, stabilizer, emulsion stabilizer all those things, then it should remain stable that is our duty, our job. Okay. Knowing all those things, we can make it. <coughs> so, that is now today uh, let us concentrate for the timing this soft contact lens and artificial pancreas. Contact lens you know say our lens the native lens is that is uh, made of tissue soft tissue that is transparent okay. is a act like lens. Now, if that uh, does not function properly. <coughs> So, we have some problem in visibility, sight and all those things. Then what we do? We use either spectacle glass, spec glass or we use contact lens. So, that that lens actually adjust the focal length in such a way. So, that some invisible things can be visible. Sometimes there are something on the surface it is invisible. You take a lens that will magnify. So, the role of the lens is to magnify the object. Okay. So, for that we need some external lens that may be in the form of this spectacle or may be in the contact uh, form of contact lens. If it is contact lens, it is, con it is uh, <coughs> put on the eyeball, it remains there. So, while it remains, so if I have some trouble, I can open it, I can remove it and keep aside. When whenever I need I can wear it okay. that is external thing. But if we use contact lens it should be put over there for long time now if there is problem then we cannot take it out frequently or can it again uh, uh, rewear frequently. So, uh, in order to overcome those problems so the contact lens should be soft it should match with the softness, hardness and hydrophilicity, hydrophobicity, barrier properties like say uh, your <coughs> permeability of oxygen, water molecules, salts all those things. So, exactly it should match, it should mimic the native tissue over there, <coughs> it should be soft enough, it should be hydrophilic enough, it should be stable enough, it should not degrade. It should not cause any irritation to the eye. For that, we need soft contact lens. Whereas this glass is uh, hard. Sometimes, uh, uh, at the beginning of this contact lens history, polymethyl methacrylate was used, which is really hard. So that was today. That is today rejected because of certain problems. Now today's soft contact lens uh, is very soft and thin, transparent stable, it can permit um, uh, the passage of oxygen, water molecules and sodium chloride all those things, tears. <coughs> so, polymer molecules have been taken and tailored, the composi its composition of polymers, uh, the composition of the polymers are uh, tailored in such a way, so that all these your favorable properties, characteristics performance could be introduced in this contactless material. Hmm. So, is the case with artificial pancreas. Okay. <coughs> now, here is a term amphiphilic co-network. First of all, you know the meaning of this amphiphilic. Amphiphilic means it has both hydrophilic and hydrophobic characteristics. And there is one more terminology IPN, this is inter penetrating network, inter penetrating network, so in this connection you will get some concept of polymer blends copolymers 
and IPNs. IPNs. Why these were developed? Before this, polymer blends. Uh, we knew only these homopolymers, very simple polyethylene, polypropylene, polyvinyl chloride, polymethylmethacrylate, polyhydroxyethylmethacrylate, so and so, rubbers and polyesters, polycarbonates, phenolic resins, phenol formaldehyde resins melamine formaldehyde resins, urea formaldehyde resins, <coughs> polymers, <coughs> polyethers, polyimides, polyamides. So, this way we can cite large examples. Now, each of these polymers have a domain of properties, each one has a properties domain, is not it? Polyester has one a properties in some domain. Polyether has some properties in, a, in another domain. That means each and every uh, polymer has got some characteristic properties. Now, during use, during making device or applications, we find that the existing polymers uh, are not able to provide the properties and performances what we require for some particular applications. It is not that it is not true that uh, whatever available polymers are there, these polymers can fulfill our necessity. That means, it must we are expecting some new properties or some other characteristics for with which I can use it. Okay. Now, there are certain containers suppose in which we can store water, but in that container we cannot store petroleum hydrocarbons, petroleum fluids. Again, in the same co container we cannot store food radicals, is not it? Like those things. So, for one specific application, we need some specific range of properties, specific your list of properties for that thing. So, we uh, people found that the existing polymers cannot provide such broad spectrum of properties. In order to develop such broad spectrum newer properties, people went, to, went for this polymer blends. One polymer <coughs> suppose say this is axis for polymer 1, this is axis for polymer 2, this is here it is 0 here it is 100, here it is polymer 100, here it is 0. So, this is the composition axis and th these are properties, properties. Now, the polymer 1, polymer 1 when it is 0, uh, when it is 100, uh, its property suppose uh, lie over here. Polymer 2, when it is 100, when that means pure polymer, when uh, pure uh, sorry, I am sorry, polymer uh, this, this should be polymer 1. So, polymer 1 0 here 100. So, polymer <coughs> 2 when it is 100 its property is here and polymer 1 when it is pure. So, its property is here. Now, some sometimes we may need a property to this extent, but if we I use either polymer 1 or polymer 2, it is not possible because polymer 1 has a limitation up to this level and polymer 2 has a limitation up to this level. So, what you have to do, take uh, do you see here <coughs> it is polymer 2 is suppose 30 and polymer 1 is 70. So, if you take a mixture of blend of polymer 1 30 polymer 1 and 70 parts polymer 2, we will get a new composition which can give you a 
better property than the individual polymer. So, this is the concept. So, we make a mix, mix or blend, we blend two polymers. Okay. Now, what happens again when we are going to make such polymer blends? What you have to do? You take polymer 1 and polymer 2 in pure form, you have to mix it, they are of high molecular weight, they are of high viscous. So, you have only two routes opening, two your um, uh, paths available. One is you take a common solvent for the both polymers, you dissolve, you put the two polymers in the common solvent, both of them will dissolve and then you can mix. Otherwise, in the solid phase you cannot mix them, is not it? You take granules of polymer 1 and polymer 2, no, that will be heterogeneous mixture and from that you cannot make a product. In order to make a product in this composition, 30, 70 composition, so what you have to do? You have to mix them, blend them either in solution phase, the single phase, homogeneous phase or you take 30 parts of one polymer, 70 parts of another polymer and heat them and mix. So, either by melt blending or by solution blending, you can make a polymer blend. Then you, if it is solution blending, you remove the solvent, remove the solvent and make the device. So, in the final form, in the blend form, it can give you this property. Now, this property may be tensile strength, hardness, elongation at break or any dynamic property or any sort of chemical property or any optical properties or any electrical properties. So, I am talking in terms of general aspects. So, if you need to develop a new property or a property beyond the properties of the individual polymers, then you have to make a blend. So, this is the procedure how to make a blend, then you can make the device, your purpose is served. But the problem is by virtue of their high molecular weight macro molecular characteristics, by solution or by melting forcefully by force you have blended them. So, if you take say uh, uh, your 50 goats and 50 cows, try to make in one room, hmm, what will happen? By virtue of their individual characteristics, they will be separated, all the cows will be on one side and the goats will be on the other side. Hmm? All right. But if you take a stick, uh, and beat them, again they will be scattered and they will make it. So, this heating and solvent is a case of beating, you see, and the molecules are mixed and you are getting a blend, all right. Otherwise, they separate into two phases, that is a problem, beating blending. So, that is a phenomena, that is a phenomena. So, phase separation is a problem, they will separate into phase slowly, slowly. In ambient condition, you, you have prepared the device and you, have, you are using that in ambient condition and what will happen uh, that will remain and they will separate into phases. That is one problem. Still then people are going for blend. Now, there is a successful blend I tell you, a blend between, please note down, a blend between nitrile rubber and PVC. Nitrile rubber and PVC. <coughs> polystyrene and polybutadiene, these are, these are stable commercial uh, blends commercially available and products are made out of that. Now, you see this cable seething, high voltage cables are seeds after insulation, say high voltage cables, uh, bigger uh, thicker cables, high large diameter cables, those are covered by this a blend of nitrile rubber and PVC. Hmm. This is a successful blend. This is a successful blend. 
Successful means uh, you see the, the phase separation and other properties deterioration during service are not that way pronounced there. That is why that blend uh, we, we are successful in making a suitable blend. Sir, blend only means chemical interaction between two homopolymers? Yes, yes, there is a there is a physical interaction between two homopolymers. Sir, what does mean by deterioration? Deterioration means decrease in decrease. Properties due to separation to phases. You see, if these two here you see both phases are present. Hmm? Now if it separates into phase uh, two phases. So uh, in some uh, portion of the product, you will find this strength. In some other portion of the product, you will find this strength. Overall, the properties are not uniform. Property uniformity will be lost. That as that I am telling as a deterioration. Property uniformity will be lost due to phase separation. That is a problem. Now, in order to overcome those problems, although you want such combination of the properties of individual polymers hmm, without such uh, long term properties decrease, people went for copolymerization. copolymerization chemical binding between the units chemical binding between the units say ethylene can uh, from ethylene you can get polyethylene from propylene you can get polypropylene okay homopolymers when ethylene and propylene monomers are taken together in in the reactor in the container and polymerized so ethylene will link up with pro propylene and propylene will link up with ethylene this way styrene will link up with butadiene and butadiene will link up with styrene. This way we can get a copolymer of styrene, butadiene, ethylene, propylene this way and isobutylene, isoprene this way we get copolymer. And there the separation into phases is restricted, restricted because those units monomeric units are linked with covalent bonds. It is very simple you understand okay. when ethylene propylene units are covalently linked linked. So, it is no longer a blend, but it is a new polymer where such monomer units are linked with covalent bonds, but in case of blends such uh, covalent linkage is not there. There is only physical mixture physical blending. Okay. Now, people also tried to get uh, stability in properties of blends. Stability in properties of blends for that what they did they used some compatibilizer, compatibilizer. or coupling agent. Or mediator. That will remain in between the phases. So, polystyrene and polybutadiene after blending we will get a blend of polybutadiene and polystyrene. You can get properties uh, of uh, say styrene butadiene copolymer rubber, but that rubber, rubbery properties in case of polystyrene and polybutadiene blend is not stable because of the problem of this phase separation. But if there is a mediator or a coupling agent or a compatibilizer, then that will hold one polymer on one end and the other polymer on the other end. It is a compatibilizer, then they will make compatible. <coughs> now, again, you think of those cows and goats, you take tiger as compatibilizer. Okay. 
you will get such a homogeneous blend that you will never separate into phases. You understand? That is comparable idea. I give you some real example. Say today polyethylene is non-degradable. From low density polyethylene, we make polyethylene film for making packaging, for application in packaging, carry bags, all these things. It is non-degradable and it is creating environmental nuisance. There is huge concern about it, environmental problems. So, what people are doing, trying or tried now starch is a copolymer, sorry starch is a natural polymer. It is a biodegradable polymer. Microbes, if the microbes get the starch, they will be very happy hmm? because this is starch is a food, very good food, nutritious food for microbes, so they will eat. So, in order to make polyethylene biodegradable, what people did? They took some quantity of starch and blended with polyethylene, then they blown film. Starch polyethylene blend film. Now, again there is a problem, but forcefully you can blend it by blend melting, you can do, but this starch is polar polymer, highly polar polymer, whereas polyethylene is highly non-polar polymer. So, these two polymers remain at two extremes and you are forcing them to be compatible. So, when this starch is melted or melt blended in presence of polyethylene, so polyethylene will encapsulate the starch. So, dispersion will not be good, film quality will not be good and this is not a successful blend and suitable or fruitful products could not be made. Now, what people did after that? They took uh, malic anhydride grafted polypropylene or polyethylene, malic, malic anhydride, you know what is malic anhydride? Hmm? This is malic anhydride. If it is hydrolyzed, it, it will form malic acid, retaining the double bond. Okay. If this thing is grafted onto polyethylene or polypropylene, what will be there? So, this is polyethylene polypropylene onto which you will get like this, or sometimes if anhydride if it is kept in dry condition, uh, one can get. like this. So, some part of the polyethylene molecule are made polar, that means polarity of the system is increased. Then if you put starch on this side which is polar, this side is polar. So, this polyethylene if it is modified like this, so starch can be accommodated. Starch you know that is anhydroglucose unit is there, hydroxyl groups are there, so that can be readable. So, people took such a malic anhydride grafted polyethylene or polypropylene or there are other compatibilizer which is having this polar and this non-polar. Now, this is actually a marriage maker. You have seen manage maker, the role of manage maker, 
but yet to experience. You have, you know what is the role of marriage maker, but yet to experience, is not it? Am I right? So, this role of marriage maker is to tell sometimes if he wants to make the marriage, sometimes he will uh, tell all the good things on both sides and if he does not want to make the marriage, he will take all the evil things or bad things on both sides. So, now you imagine whether marriage will be held or not. So, that marriage maker having two characters, hmm, two characters, now those two characters help or matching between the two parties are also the same thing. So, if you take a compatible agent like marriage maker, you can get a successful blend. So, I hope you have little basic concept on what is homopolymer, what is polymer blend. All right. Next comes this IPM. It has been found that in some applications neither the homopolymer nor the polymer blends nor the copolymers are suitable in some applications. Uh, this homopolymers, copolymers or polymer blends may not be found suitable, may not be found adequate, may not have or may not provide adequate performances. Then people went for, went for interpenetrating networks IPN. What is IPN? You take a home polymer, okay. put some cross linker. You take home polymer, put some cross linker, you will get cross linked polymer. That means, you will have this kind of inter three dimensional 3D network. 3D network, we will get 3D network, it will behave like a gel, cross link gel, all right. This is insoluble and infusible, okay. The properties of 3D, physical properties, they are insoluble and infusible and they have a uh, list of properties, domain of properties which is not sufficient enough for my use. What I will do? I need to into incorporate another few more properties or add few more properties. For that, I found that yes, there is another polymer available. If we can incorporate this polymer, probably it will do. So, what is done? we can take a gel of this polymer, then if we put this gel in the monomer, liquid monomer of another, uh, another liquid monomer, then it will swell over there, then we polymerize. That means, within one network, if we polymerize another poly monomer, we will get interpenetration of one polymer system into another, clear? You grow a second polymer within this network, inside this free volume, interpenetrating, you understand? You are having a 3D network, within the 3D network you are growing another polymer system, 
So, that polymer will just uh, be will be grown inside this network that is a you can call an interpenetric network. Now, if there is a problem of again solubility of the second homopolymer grown inside the 3D network, if you want to make it insoluble and infusible, then you also add cross linker for the second polymer. So, that will form again another network, that will form another network inside this. You can see some configurations or drawings given in books. So, it is a you can say it is a blend of it is not a true blend, but it is a blend a kind of blend or mixture kind of things of two interpenetrating polymer networks, both are insoluble and infusible. So, the question of the problem of separation into phases, solubility infusibility your uh, infusibility all those things will be overcome so that is a ipn yes not blend not blend you see you think of one polymer network say vulcanized natural rubber simple polymer network how you consider this room if there are wires and ropes or, or strings or filaments just suspended from the top to ceiling to bottom a floor and again those filaments uh, extended from one wall to the other wall this way, this way, this way. So, you will get what will happen and if there are knots, if there are knots uh, in this crossover points, then that is a network, three dimensional network, 3D network of one thread. Okay. Now, you can develop another network of different thread, different color, different properties in the same network. Both are separately, both are separately but both are uh, interconnected, both are interconnected of one kind. So, you will have threads of one kind which are interconnected uh, and you have interpenetrated another thread, another your filament through this network and those are again interconnected uh, uh, between themselves that is called interpenetrating network. That network interpenetrating network much more will be much more stable than either homopolymer or copolymer or this thing not only that you will get your combination of properties of both the polymers avoiding the problem of insolubility, infusibility or problem of a phase separation all those things. So, the properties will be further improved that is the IPN system. For example, I tell you if you take a network of hydrophilic polymer, if you take a network of hydrophilic polymer, what will happen? If you put some water, it will swell, cross linked hydrophilic gel hydrogel, hydrogels are always cross linked which are hydrophilic. Now, if you want to regulate its swelling extent means swelling in volume, what you can do? You can regulate the amount of intermolecular bonds more number of intermolecular bonds, more will be the cross link density, less will be the swelling. Is it very simple thing? Hydrogel, if the cross link density is more, swelling will be less, if the cross link density is less, swelling will be more. So, that way you can regulate the volume swelling of that network can be regulated, controlled by the amount of cross link bonds present over there or cross link density and that can be that is possible by 
uh, adjusting the amount of cross linking agents you have taken for cross linking of those polymers. That means, the length of the segment between two cross links, length of the segments between two say this is the length of the segment of this polymer molecule, this segment between these two cross links, this is the length. Now, if there is one more bond introduced, then length of the segment is decreased that means, cross link density is increased. So, this way we can regulate the swelling properties or the network characteristics of that polymer depending on the cross link density. All right. Or else we can <coughs> control the hydrophilicity or hydrophobicity of that network by putting or, or linking some hydrophobic agents. For example, this black one is hydrophilic. In order to regulate its hydrophilicity, if you introduce this red network which is hydrophobic in nature, is IPN of hydrophilic and hydrophobic. IPN of IPN system of hydrophilic polymer and hydrophobic polymer. Can you not regulate the hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity that way? Are you listening? Huh? You are not responding to me. Can you not regulate this hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity? If you put uh, some red network within the black network, black network is hydrophilic, red network is hydrophobic. Okay. So, you can regulate the hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity by such interpenetrating network. Yes? Sir, if you draw a hydrophobic matrix polymer, then how will you incorporate a hydro, uh, hydrophilic uh, polymer into that? Then you have not understood the interpenetrating network IPN system formation. Say initially you take hydrophilic polymer, cross link it, okay. that will form a hydrophilic a network of hydrophilic polymer, you swell it in another monomer, polymerize the second monomer within that gel spaces. In the, okay. There are lot of space available inside, you have incorporated the monomer. So, you have allowed the polymer to grow inside this gel. So, second polymer is grown over there, then you have added a cross linking agent which will specifically cross link the second polymer. So, you will get two interpenetrating 3 D networks. Sir, if your original matrix is hydrophilic, sir, how will your second monomer, monomer which is hydrophobic work to get into the hydrophilic matrix? That you have to adjust by adjusting the solvent. You see hydrophilic and hydrophobic, there is you see it everything is not hydro 100 percent, 10 percent hydrophilic or hydrophobic. Huh. So, you, you take some solvent such a solvent that it has got some hydrophilicity say 50 percent hydrophilicity and 50 percent hydrophobicity or 60 percent hydrophilicity and 40 percent hydrophobicity, you understand. There you add the monomer. Okay. Now, I tell you methyl methacrylate, methyl methacrylate is uh, hydrophobic in nature. Although it is hydrophobic, uh, but some methyl methacrylate monomers will be soluble in water. You understand? That means, it depending on its solubility, although it is hydrophobic, but it is little bit soluble. So, 1 percent or 2 percent it is soluble in water. So, that soluble material uh, monomer will form a polymer network, light network that, that way you have to make. You understand? Sir, can it be also dependent on the pH of the solvent? Ah, it may be pH or some anything you see this solubility, you have to regulate the solubility. You take a, a different, you take different composition of solvent, it is not that always you have to take only one solvent. You take two, so water is hydrophilic, uh, water is highly polar. 
with water you take THF or uh, take uh, some alcohol, say isopropanol, something like that. So, polarity will change, solubility of some polymer in that your uh, mixed solvent will change, that way you have to regulate, you have to adjust. But what I am trying to get you the concept, concept of in IPN system, you understand, two networks are interpenetrated, now one network may be hydrophilic, another network will be hydrophobic, that is possible, people have done already, it is not, it, you can also do, hmm. you can also prepare in the laboratory. So, that thing I want to tell you over here, for that I have to take, I, I took so much of time to explain that concept, soft contact lens, amphiphilic co-network, amphiphilic co-network, say you think that this uh, black net network, 3D network is suppose hydrophilic and red network is suppose hydrophobic. Now, such a network is called amphiphilic network. Why it is necessary? Because <coughs> oxygen is hydrophobic. So, the permeability of oxygen, all these things. You see, this science has come out through research. It is difficult to accept how this oxygen is hydrophilic, because oxygen is soluble in water, to what extent? There is some limit of solubility of oxygen in water, hmm? up to certain concentration. It is not that a very high, is soluble in high concentration, hmm? like that of ammonia. Ammonia is highly soluble in water, but like that of ammonia, oxygen is not that highly soluble in water. So, this contact lens that needs penetration of oxygen. So, it needs certain hydrophobicity for transmission of tears, tear that needs hydrophilicity. So, that balance hydrophobic, hydrophilic balance can be made. People have seen that if we take a such a IPN, amphiphilic IPN, probably that can make a balance of this hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity and that can lead to a successful contact lens as well as it is soft. So, it is not only softness, any other properties, it is stability, inertness, all these things should be developed. Huh. So, IPNs and grafted networks in a, is an emerging field for high technology applications such as extended VR soft contact lens. It is not always you have to take this IPN, this uh, uh, amphiphilic IPN. You can graft a short chain of hydrophobic polymer into the network of hydrophilic polymer. This simple common sense will tell the hydrophilic when to make little uh, little bit hydrophobic in nature, a character. So, you graft little bit some hydrophobic polymers at certain locations. Hmm? So, you can get amphiphilic characteristics two component networks of covalently interconnected hydrophilic hydrophobic phases of co-continuous morphology, co-continuous morphology means morphology should be identical. So, co-continuous permeability and other properties are uh, maintained over there known as APCNs respond to morphological isomerization sometimes called smart networks by swelling both in water and hydrocarbons. You see it will swell in water as well as in hydrocarbons is little contradictory things, no, because you have added two things, both the things. So, it is, it will show a, lim, a limit of swelling. If it is purely hydrophilic, it will swell to very high extent. If it is purely hydrophobic, it will not swell at all, but if it remains in between, it will swell, swell both in water as well as in hydrocarbon. That characteristic has been developed in such network. <coughs> Soft contact lens and extended we are extended we are means without any problem, hmm. without any problem people can get extended we are uh, without uh, any irritation or other things. That soft contact lens must be co-continuous in respect to water, salt solution, tear and oxygen a hydrophobic gas. So, co-continuous morphology in extended we are contact 
lens were achieved by combination of a highly hydrophilic phase set say for example, polydimethyl acrylamide, polydimethyl acrylamide, acrylamide you know, you know polyacrylamide you know, dimethyl acrylamide, dimethyl acrylamide means, where the methyl groups are there? On the nitrogen atom, on the nitrogen atom, you think of PIPAN. NH2 this polydimethyl acrylamide and as well as poly N vinyl pyrrolidone to provide weightability. It must be weightable, otherwise, you cannot be used for extended wear, extended wear, it will give comfort by virtue of the flexibility of this chain. It will show the hydrophilic characteristics by virtue of this C O and N polar nature and on eye lens movement within the with the highly hydrophobic polydimethyl siloxane. Now, if it is pure highly hydrophilic then there will be again some interaction between the native tissue and the uh, lens but if it is little bit hydrophobic also then movement lens movement can be made easier. So, lens movement with the highly hydrophobic polydimethyl siloxane. So, so, a network of this polymer with network of silicon polymer, silicon polymer polydimethyl siloxane, polydimethyl siloxane here polydimethyl siloxane phases to provide the needed high oxygen permeability essential for the healthy eye. Modern extended wear soft contact lenses are efficient of siloxian hydrogels. Now, there are few systems of amphiphilic, amphiphilic co-network of amphiphilic co-network means hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic network poly N N dimethyl acrylamide L polyisobutylene, polyisobutylene <coughs> CO2 dimethyl amino ethyl methacrylate, poly N N dimethyl amino ethyl methacrylate L polyisobutylene, poly 2 hydroxy ethyl methacrylate L polyisobutylene. These hold promise as controlled and delayed implantable delivery devices of various brands also. So, not only that, if there are certain problems in the eye, you see what we do, we take eye drops, some antibiotics and other things in the form of eye drops, some liquid, we put a drop of the eye, but you can have some encapsulated drug inside. We developed in our laboratory some membrane, some polymer film, uh, polymer film, now that may be uh, loaded with such drugs. So, if that film small uh, your portion can be put inside eye. We actually contacted with a doctor, eye surgeon here. He was very much enthusiastic or exciting uh, looking at the development that some drug could be antibiotic could be put inside that polymer membrane and could be put inside the eye and that will slowly release of the drug because majority of the time we forget to put the eye drop, take the eye drop and it actually uh, does not help our easy or quick curing, mm, quick healing of the problem in the eye. But if there is some, if you go to a doctor, he will place it in your eye and it will remain over there. So, you do not have to bother whether you have to, you are taking regularly, frequently that eye drop. So, these can help such solution of such problems. Other applications or efficiency include dexamethasone, that is a drug released from copolymer of HEMA with uh, malic acid telecylic poly 3 caprolactone or poly DL lactic acid and swelling in water and chloroform. These amphiphilic co networks support cell proliferation. Okay. Uh, I will give you this thing, you will uh, read in detail. 
this bioartificial pancreas in the last day I told you what is artificial pancreas uh, which I can show the ability of uh, sensing the insulin concentration or uh, uh, glucose concentration as well as which can uh, release insulin trapped inside uh, encapsulated inside. So, this bio artificial pancreas is a dual function implanted device for sensing the glucose level in the blood of the host and for delivering correct amount of insulin dictated by the prevailing glucose concentration. So, you have got the concept now you are polymer scientist you have some knowledge in polymer you can help some other researcher that look here is a polymer you can try with this thing. It is not that always you have to know everything, but if you know little bit if you have some exposure. So, you can help then you go for study and you get, uh, find out the literature search the literature you will find uh, details of this literature and then you, you can uh, develop the product. So, these are something by immunoprotecting uh, membranes in the bio artificial pancreas a device of living insulin producing animal cells protected by an immuno isolatory membrane. Uh, these are uh, some specific technological development made on this line implanted into diabetic human for curing diabetes. Okay. This, uh, so, this bio artificial pancreas can be made with such type of polymer networks because here I mostly hydrogels and their hydrophilicity, hydrophobicity all are uh, regulated by regulating their compositions. Thank you.